the Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. We offer this morning's Eucharist for the departed souls of Reverend Mother Ernest, Yu Sing Ng, Lucas Chin, Joseph Yong and Agnes Wong, Eugene Ong, Mario John Lee, Maria Rodriguez Lee, Samantha Lo, Michael Chan, Matthias Lo, Philip Lin, Judy Lee, Ambrose Valentine Butville, Joseph Ferns, Lim Peck Piao, and all the souls in purgatory. We pray for the special intentions of Sally Sue, Lillian Almedia, Maria Chu, Ong Li Kui, Teresa and family, Father Paulino Miranda, Gabriel Surin, and in thanksgiving for Kara and Teresa Chin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we draw close to this week, examining our hearts, and for what lies at the depths of our hearts, our thoughts, our words, and our actions, we examine our intentions in all this, and we ask God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, you who grant us by glorious healing remedies while still on earth to be partakers of the things of heaven, guide us, we pray, through this present life and bring us to that light in which you dwell. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Micah. You shepherds crook, O Lord, lead your people to pasture, the flock that is your heritage. Living confined in a forest with meadowland all around, let them pasture in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old. As in the days when you came out of Egypt, grant us to see wonders. What God can compare with you, taking forth away, pardoning crime, not cherishing anger forever, but delighting in showing mercy? Once more have pity on us, tread down our faults to the bottom of the sea through all our sin. Grant Jacob your faithfulness 
and Abraham your mercy, as you swore to our fathers from the days of long ago. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is compassion and love. The Lord is compassion and love. My soul, give thanks to the Lord. All my being, bless his holy name. My soul, give thanks to the Lord and never forget all his blessings. The Lord is compassion and love. It is he who forgives all your guilt and heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, the crowns you, you with, who crowns you with love and compassion. The Lord, the Lord is compassion and love. His wrath will come to an end. He will not be angry forever. He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. The, the Lord is compassion and love. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. The, the Lord, Lord is compassion and love. I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. The tax collectors and the sinners were all seeking the company of Jesus to hear what he had to say. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, This man, they said, welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them. A man had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, let me have the share of the estate that would come to me. So the father divided the property between them. A few days later, the younger son got together everything he had and left for a distant country where he squandered his money on a life of debauchery. When he had spent it all, that country experienced a severe famine. And now he began to feel the pinch. So he hired himself out to one of the local, local inhabitants who put him on his farm to fit the pigs. And he would willingly have filled his belly with the husk the pigs were eating, but no one offered him anything. Then he came to his senses and said, How many of my father's paid servants have more food than they want? And here am I dying of hunger. I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your paid servants. So he left the place and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion. He ran to the boy, clasped him in his arms, and kissed him tenderly. Then his son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, 
Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the cuff we have been fattening and kill it. We are going to have a feast, a celebration, because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and has been found. And he began to celebrate. Now the eldest son was out in the fields, and on his way back, as he drew near the house, he could hear music and dancing. Calling one of the servants, he asked what it was all about. Your brother has come home, replied the servant, and your father has killed the calf we have fattened, because he's got him back safe and sound. He was angry and then refused to go in. And the father came out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've slaved for you and never once disobeyed your orders. You never offered me so much as a kid for me to celebrate with my friends. But for this son of yours, when he comes back after swallowing up your property, he and his women, you kill the calf we have been fattening. The father said, My son, you are with me always, and all I have is yours. But it was only right that we should celebrate and rejoice. Because your brother here was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We draw close to the second week of Lent. And tomorrow we step into the third Sunday or the third week of Lent. Allow me this morning as we draw close to the second week to recap some of the essence of our reflection during the second week. I invited you this week to step into the depths of your heart to examine what lies at the very core of our heart. Our intentions, our motivations, our desires. You saw this in the Zebedee brothers when the mother came forth with their intentions. You saw when Jesus examined the hearts of the Pharisees and scribes who were with long tassels and phylacteries who refused to raise a hand to help others but continuously judged and condemned others. We saw the intent of the tenants yesterday who went about killing the son of the master, the intentions of the heart. Somehow today's gospel and readings capitalizes or summarizes everything that we need to know. It's about God's mercy for us. It's about God's desire for us ultimately to be transfigured into the image of his son and to listen to that voice of the transfiguration. To me, when I sat with this reading, it was a movement from hopelessness to hope. It was just that. I said on Monday that one of the dangers in spiritual journeys when you enter into what is called spiritual despair, when you tell yourself, I'm unworthy, I'm worthless, I'm useless, I'm a sinner, Will God ever forgive me for all the things that I've ever done? And yet I told them there is always a Father, a God, who is kind and compassion. The desire of God, the thirst of God is the Father of today's gospel. Just waiting to embrace you the moment you come back. It doesn't matter whether you stand outside the house or inside the house. He will still look for you. Just as the son came back, the youngest one, he still went in search for the elder son who was outside and he says, what I have is always yours. You are still my son. It doesn't matter where we stand and where we sit. We could be in the front row or even at the back seat. God's love is always kind and compassion. 
sometimes we have to redefine what hope is in our lives. And that is the story of today's. Because Prophet Micah tells the people, despite moving from Egypt to the desert and to the promised land, you remain unfaithful to God. And God will always bring you back. Prophet Micah pleads and tells God, remember your love for them. Remember that you will always love them. Let us ask the Lord the grace as we come to our senses, just like the youngest son today, who woke up and realized it's time to go home. Lent is all about coming home. Lent is all about returning home. Let us return to the house of the Father by acknowledging that the Father is always kind and compassion in our faith journey. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth is given in human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Through the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through these sacred gifts, we pray, O Lord, may our redemption yield its fruits, restraining us from unruly desires and leading us onward to the gifts of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast with the joy of mind made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and by participating in the mysteries by which they are reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you may bestow on them as daughters and sons. And so with angels and saints, with thrones and dominions, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. 
In giving you thanks, Father, he broke the bread. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks, Father, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Sebastian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Faustina and John Paul II, in all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, to praise, to glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, as we pray the Our Father today, I, I invite you to pray for the intentions of Holy Father Pope Francis as he steps into Iraq, for the church and for the people of Iraq, and for the growth of Christianity. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, art in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is, is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin. Save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. We'll take a moment to offer that peace to one another.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You must rejoice, my son, for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found.
Let us pray. May your divine sacrament, O Lord, which we have received, fill the inner depths of our heart, and by its working mightily within us, make us partakers of his grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to, to God. God. Pray for all. God, our, our merciful Father, Father source, source of, of healing, cast the light of health and well-being on those who have been exposed to coronavirus, those who have contracted the disease. Bless them, protect them, and bring them speedily to full recovery. Source of life, grant public health and government officials the strength to act swiftly and decisively with compassion and understanding in service to humankind, fighting this outbreak, threatening the lives of our brothers and sisters, nations and communities, young and old, God of the present moment, Bring hope and courage to all who wait or work in uncertainty. Bring hope that you will make them the equal of whatever lies ahead. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus, through the intercession of our blessed Mother Mary. Amen. Have a blessed weekend and take care. Same to you, Father.